this next section of the small called articles is I gotta be honest it's not really one that applies to us very much today it's um, this is small called article part three article nine concerning ordination and vocation um, and there is a lot to talk about about um, about what does it mean to be ordained what is this idea of vocation but we're not going to talk about those things today because that's not what this article is about. This article is about the who has the authority to ordain. And the argument was being made um, that you had to be a bishop in, at the time in, in Luther's church. You had to be ordained by a bishop of the Catholic church. So the Lutherans who were started, they weren't calling themselves Lutherans yet necessarily, um, but they were starting to separate from the Catholic Church, and the Catholic Church's response was, we're not going to ordain any more pastors for you. Which causes a problem, because if, if there's a belief that to be a pastor, you must be ordained in this way, and the bishops say, we're not going to ordain you anymore. Well, that means when, when your pastors that you have now die, you're not going to have any more. This is a problem they needed to address. So Luther is saying... And he says, therefore, as ancient examples of the church and the fathers teach us, we should and will ordain suitable persons to this office for ourselves. Um, and this is kind of um, how we, how we, this is very much how we handle things in the LCMS. We, we have decided, uh, and, and the wording, is this we've talked about this because it's in the Augsburg Confession, it's, um, Without you're ordained if you've received a public call. So we say, like, we lift up um, and ordain people suitable for the office, ordain suitable persons to this office. And how we decide that, how we as the Lutheran Church Missouri Center have decided, this is how we go about ordination as we walk together as a synod. So we say you have to have a, um, a you have to be certified by um, one of the seminaries, ultimately, is what it comes down to. So, um, for now, and I might miss some, but the, the pro, if you want to be ordained in the LCMS, if you want to be a Lutheran pastor, here are your options. A traditional MDiv at Concordia Seminary St. Louis, that is the route I went. A traditional MDiv at Fort Wayne. You can join the CMC program, um, which is a mostly distance learning uh, program. Um, that That is a coordination between Concordia Irvine and Concordia Seminary St. Louis. Um, there is the SMP program through Concordia St. Louis. That is a, again, a mostly distance program that is more intended for people who have been doing non-pastoral ministry for a long time. So my dad was a DC for... For over 25 years, he went through the SMP program, and he's now a pastor. Um, I know other people who have been lay leaders in their church, um, now professional church workers. They they've just they've been leaders in their churches for a long time, and they go through the program so that they can serve in that way. Um, this isn't really meant to be a way around because you don't want to go to traditional seminary. That's not what the SMP is designed for. Um, and I think the only other way is. If you're a pastor in another denomination, you can you can do something called colloquies, which I, I don't actually know what that process looks like, but essentially it's um, we we want to make sure your theology is in line with ours, and then we'll say okay, you're we'll we'll accept you as a pastor in our denomination now. So that's how we have decided to that is for us how we have defined suitable people for the office. And as a church body, we've agreed that that's how we're going to operate together. Um, so that's that's uh, Article Nine concerning, or Article Ten, sorry, concerning ordination and vocation. Um, if you have comments, if you have questions, if you have concerns, put them in the in the appropriate section below. And regardless, go in peace, serve the Lord. Thanks be to God.